How's it going you lovely bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video of the principles of baking, I will show you how to use potatoes to make your bread softer, moister and tastier. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. Historically, potatoes have been used in bread making out of necessity. Grain crop failures resulted in smaller yields and less available flour. To help fight hunger, bakers tried to develop breads including ingredients such as oats, peas, barley and potatoes. And whilst most of the ingredients didn't catch on, potatoes turned out to be a great addition and they are still used to this day. And not just out of pure necessity, there are some great benefits for adding potatoes to our bread dough. That is what we're going to talk about today. I will explain how potatoes affect the dough and the resulting bread. And I will tell you how to convert a recipe to be made with potatoes. And by the end of it, you may just be intrigued to try it out for yourself. But first things first, let's prep our potatoes. And there are some choices you should make. You can of course roast potatoes, or you can boil them. You can peel them, or you can leave the skin on. And of course you can try using different varieties of potatoes. Roasting them may result in more moisture loss. So some more adjustments in dough hydration may be needed. One benefit of roasted potatoes is that they will have a more intense flavor. Leaving the skins on can also affect the flavor. And it can make the crumb of the bread look more interesting and unique. All of this is up to our personal taste of course. Try out different ways and see what works for you. When it comes to the variety of potato, I like to use potatoes with yellow interior. Anything that is great for mashing will be great for bread making. Generally, yellow potatoes taste the best and they have a more creamy texture which will make the crumb of our bread nice and soft and creamy. You want to cook your potatoes until they are completely soft. When cutting, the knife should go through the potatoes smoothly. One benefit of boiling potatoes is that we get left with a byproduct, which is the potato water, which you can use to replace the water in your bread recipe. When it comes to mashing your potatoes, you can use a fork, a masher or a potato ricer. The fork will be the least effective, but it'll still work. Mash your potato until it's completely smooth, especially if you're making no-knead bread, as we're going to do in this video. We'll make two sets of breads today. One normal white bread and a high hydration flat bread with some whole wheat flour and olive oil. Here we have the ingredients for the white bread. The one on the left contains flour, water, yeast and salt. The one on the right has the same amount of flour, yeast and salt, but it contains potatoes and potato water. As for our flatbread, it's made up of white flour, whole wheat flour, water, yeast, salt and olive oil. And of course the potato version has extra potato and potato water instead of regular water. And as always, this is a comparison video, so I will not be talking you through the bread baking steps here. Instead, whilst I'm making the bread, We'll talk about potatoes and how they affect bread dough and I'll tell you how to convert your recipes to be made with potatoes. Potatoes are starchy and starch is a great thickening agent. Various starches are used in cooking and baking for that purpose. Some examples include cornstarch, arrowroot and rice. Flour also contains starch but flour also contains gluten forming proteins. That is what sets it apart from other starches. Water evaporates during baking and at the same time wheat starch absorbs water from the gluten network leaving it hardened and rigid, but also flexible and able to stand up and keep a certain shape. Adding potatoes helps the bread retain more water. Potato starch is extremely good at holding on to water. The moister your bread, the longer it will take to stale. Adding potatoes to our bread dough allows us to add more water to it and the potato starch prevents that water from escaping too soon and thus it stays fresher for longer. But it is not only keeping quality that is affected. Gelatinized or cooked potato starch gives the crust and crumb a certain plasticity the crumb becomes bouncy, squishy and moist. Adding potatoes also weakens the gluten structure, which as we know makes the bread softer, which gives the bread a nice mouth feel. Potatoes also add a sweetness and richness to the flavor, and they promote better browning of the crust of the bread too. So there are quite few benefits to using them. But how to use potatoes in bread making? There are many potato bread recipes out there, and some use more potatoes than others. The amount of potato that you use is up to you and up to your taste, and of course up to the desired result. Because the potato starch can absorb so much water, we must increase the hydration. If you simply added 100 grams of potato to your bread dough, it would be way too dry. It's not as simple as just adding random amounts of potatoes to your bread dough. More potato equals higher potential hydration of the bread dough. But of course the more potato you add, the weaker the gluten will be. As little as 10% in baker's percentage can be used to great effect. The other ingredients in the recipe play a big part in this. Weaker or gluten-free flour breads could become quite heavy and dense if too many potatoes are added. Potatoes contain around 75% water, but calculating the final hydration according to this number will result in a very dry dough. When it comes to compensating the hydration, I have so far found an easy general rule of thumb that has worked for me. 
which is that in baker's percentage terms, for every 1% of potato added to the recipe, the hydration of the overall formula should be increased by half a percent. Whilst I've been talking, I've already finished making the first recipe and started on the second. But whilst I'm making this, I'll get back to the formula of the first recipe. And don't worry too much about all the numbers that I'll tell you now, because you will find all the written details in the blog post, link below the video. Okay, so the first white bread recipe contained 200 grams of flour, 135 grams of water, 4 grams of salt and 2.5 grams of yeast. The original hydration of the recipe was 67%. I decided to add 50% potato, which is 100 grams. So as I said earlier, every 1% of potato added requires half a percent of increased hydration. So there is 50% of potato, 25% increase in hydration. The adjusted recipe hydration was 93%. That's 67 plus 25. Since the potato is 75% water, the amount of water contained in the potato that I added was 75 grams. Because we increased the hydration to 93%, the overall amount of water required went from 135 grams to 186 grams. All we need to do now is subtract the amount of water contained in the potato from the total amount of water in the dough and we'll find out how much water we need. And that's 186 minus 75, which equals 111 grams, which would no doubt bother me, so I rounded it down to 110. So the new formula for the recipe was 200 grams of flour, 100 grams of boiled potato, 110 grams of potato water, 4 grams salt, 2.5 grams of yeast. And I'm sure it sounded very complicated, but it wasn't. When you read it on my website, it'll make much more sense. There is also a simpler way. You could simply replace 1 8th of the flour in the recipe with potato. And for this example, it will be 200 divided by 8 equals 25 grams. So the new formula would be 175 grams of flour, 25 grams of potato, 135 grams of water, 4 grams of salt, 2.5 grams of yeast. And that would make it about 86% hydration. There is one problem with that method. As you can see right now, these two loaves gained pretty much the same volume, even though the total mass of the potato bread is almost 80 grams greater than the original recipe. If you are going to use the easy conversion, you can count on your bread coming out quite a bit smaller. But that's about it when it comes to converting a recipe. Let's compare the breads that we made. Obviously, the crust on the potato bread came out much darker, so it could be baked on a lower temperature. The crumb on the potato bread had a more yellow color as you can see. It was softer, much more easy to tear open and it had a more pleasant mouthfeel. It had a nice sweetness to it. And even though potato bread sounds like it's going to taste like potatoes, it doesn't, or at least it doesn't to me. Okay, and here's our flatbread. And by the way, I'm cutting all of these after 24 hours. The potato bread seems to have a denser looking crumb. Unlike the white bread, this one contains 60% potato. And that meant that the final hydration of it was 114%, which is crazy. It felt denser and heavier, because it was heavier of course, but the crumb was still nice and tender. It was very easy to tear open, and it was not very chewy. It was really moist, slightly sweet and rich. Saying that, 60% potato is probably pushing the limits here. Like I said earlier, it is up to you how much potatoes you use. So have you ever used potatoes in your bread though? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.